G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And of course, in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on how to build a Halo 5 DMR out of styrofoam. Now this is for the more advanced people, of course, those who have been building for quite some time, or at least have attempted quite a few of the tutorials that I've posted in the recent months and years. This will require you to already know majority of the techniques used in general foam fabrication, and then go ahead and apply some additional steps which of course you'll see in the video. Now styrofoam is of course, like I said, the material we're using. That of course is this material here, usually found in giant sheets ranging in different colors from green, blue, pink. Doesn't really matter what color they are, that's just what they're printed in. But for the most part, it's the same material. This one here is in 40 millimeter, that's what we're working in today. I don't know what that is in inches, I'm sorry. But if I was to go ahead and do this gun in a, another thickness, I'd aim for a 30 mil. So if you can find a 30, then you're in a better advantage than I was as 40 millimeter. It is a great thickness, but unfortunately it does kind of grow on the larger, thicker side of guns, which for film wise, it makes it kind of uh, a bit more impactful, but for more authentic reasons, 30 millimeter is better to build up from rather than with a 40 millimeter, which we have to carve in two. So by the end of the tutorial, you're aiming to have something like this. This is of course the outcome from the tutorial. And you can see it's got quite a bit of detail, a lot more than what you'd see from one of my standard EVA foam beginner tutorials. This is exactly how I would make my props. Well, it's exactly how I do make my props. So you are learning the exact same process I go through to create a high class display prop, much like any of these behind me, but this one's even more detailed than these ones. So you're in for a fun tutorial. Now to ensure this isn't a two hour video, I have actually skipped quite a few steps of the repetitive technique use. Of course, I don't need to show you a hundred times how to bevel a certain edge. I'll just tell you this edge needs to be beveled, show you the before and show you the after. And of course you guys will know how to put the dots together. That's the only way to ensure that this isn't a full long web series just for this one gun. To actually film and record this whole tutorial process, it was 12 hours worth of actually sitting down here cutting, taking photos, taking another photo, recording the process. So you can see for me, it was a very long recording process to bring you this tutorial and to edit it. Well, that was another story, but let's jump right in. Of course, you're going to need templates. You can, of course, get those for free. The same ones I've used for this are in the link in the description box below. Go ahead and grab those, print them off and let's get started. All right, first things first, of course, go ahead and print off the templates. You can get those for free via the link in the description box below. Now what we'll do is we'll assemble the main bulk of this gun by cutting it out of the uh, actual pieces of paper and assembling the final little buttstock on the end, which is a separate piece as it wasn't a part of the main core because I simply couldn't fit it on to make it the page length that I needed. What you can do then is go ahead and of course, tape this down onto your sheet slash block of styrofoam. You can then you take a pen or a pencil, whatever you prefer and transfer the perimeter outline in. We're then gonna add a safety line, which I do for all my styrofoam constructions this sits about an inch or an inch and a half outside the main cores perimeter line. This provides us with a safety barrier when we're cutting into the foam, so that way we're never gonna actually cut into our actual design. Or if you somehow manage to, then you're cutting on a very disjointed angle and you probably need to reassess your cutting ability. <laughs> I'm kidding, just be a bit more careful next time. We can jump in and start adding across the lines or the guidelines, which will help us assess the second side to make sure that when we lay down the design on the other alternative side of the foam, they all sit there symmetrical. This is a very tricky part, but it does require a lot of attention and a lot of uh, eyeing to make sure that this does come across right. So what I'm using is a small piece of cardboard, hence a Pokemon card, to use the 90 degree angles to throw those lines across. So that way, once you've got them all nailed down, you should be able to flip the template, uh, flip the foam over and lay in the template in according to those lines. It is gonna be completely on your eye to assess, is it sitting straight? Maybe do it lightly in a pen, and then once you know you've got it pretty much solid, you can go with the darker line and make it permanent. Then what you can do is slowly take your graph knife and go around the whole perimeter lines, trimming off the excess safety area. Of course, we don't need it now because we're gonna start working on the main core piece. So to kick that off, we'll go ahead and start at the back and work our way forward. So we'll grab the ammo section here. We'll actually grab the template, cut it free and transfer in the line of detail, which helps us symbolize where this is gonna sit. 
Now we'll actually excavate into this piece to give it the nice 3D perspective we want. Rather than cutting it free, if you wanted to actually cut it free and make it uh, detachable, you're more than welcome to. But for now, we're just gonna make it look like a nice piece of detail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut down on a 90 degree angle, maybe about half an inch in or a quarter of an inch, whatever thickness you prefer. Then we're gonna come back in on that line on a 45 degree angle to bevel out that edge. This is gonna help us symbolize how deep we are wanting to go. So now when we go in on this angle here and shave off these sides, we can see exactly where those lines are meeting. So that way it comes across as a nice flat layer, not one that's on an angle <laughs> and uh, odd. I guess is the keyword, odd. You can then go back with some sandpaper, some nice fine grit sandpaper and make that flat and nice and clean. Moving on, we can start to do some of the additional details in here, of course, this ammo um, magazine section does have some detail on it, therefore we want to put that in there. It does actually have quite a bit, but we'll slowly go through and break apart the template, transferring in all those vertical lines and some other peculiar looking lines in detail until you've got it all in there. If you want to play with some levels, you certainly can. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump in and add some little bevel lips to make these uh, deep lines rather than just sitting there. And for this part here, I'll actually cut it out and make it a proper recess or an excavated level. So that already gives our design two separate, oh, sorry, three separate layers of detail, creating that three perspective that of course is very imperative and makes a gun or a prop or an art piece that much more interesting. You can then also go in and add some more pieces of detail, I'll actually go into this one here and excavate this section out, just making it that additional depth and all the more eye-catching, which is uh, which is what we want. We'll now go ahead and start to work our way up. Now, right above the section we've just completed, we do have another little piece. This is actually gonna be a nice little beveled edge, so we'll chuck in that line and then we'll just go ahead and bevel down in it. You might want to take a few passes on this. You don't want to do it in one solid go as you have to make sure that these lines are meeting up. If you don't have them meeting up, it's going to look a bit obtuse. But of course, that's uh, not what we're aiming for here in this advanced tutorial. We want everything to be on point, literally on point. We can then start to work our way to the front handle section. And of course, we don't want to leave it in a 90 degree angle. We want to curve this off, but we want to do it in style, make it look clean. So you want to add the bevel line and the depth line and then shave off that section. Also, we'll go ahead and do that on the interior part of the handle as well. Of course, that's going to be a bit awkward to hold if we left it in the 90 degree state it's currently in. So we'll add that depth line and that bevel line in as well. And then we'll go ahead and start shaving them off like you did on the previous piece. Take your time, make sure all the lines meet up. So that way it's both symmetrical and clean on either side. Once that comes off, it should look really nice like this and you should be able to put your hand in and assess whether it's comfortable to hold. We'll now jump in and start to work our way up again. We'll go in and place this little rectangular piece of detail. Ask me what it is and I wouldn't be able to give you an answer. <laughs> I'm not here to design the gun, I'm simply here to help you create what's already been created. So we'll go ahead and add this piece of detail in anyway. What we can then do is start to break apart all the individual sections as well. Breaking apart the template, giving us this nice little vertical, then diagonal, then vertical line here. And we'll chuck this in where it's supposed to be, of course, using the template as a negative spacing to get that line in as needed. We can then go ahead and, of course, do it with the remaining pieces. We've got some stuff sitting across here right between the handle interior and the odd square rectangle design that we mentioned earlier that we didn't know what it was. <laughs> so go ahead and chuck that in. We can then go ahead and also to start to break apart some of the more intense detail and chuck that in. Now, I'm not gonna do a tutorial on all these little pieces here because obviously it's the exact same process pretty much that we've just done for the main magazine part. You're just gonna have to take your time in applying that and choosing the thicknesses and the depths of your choice. But just take your time, mimic what's on screen if you want. Otherwise, that's up to you. We can now work our way in actually building up some detail. Of course, the front foregrip is gonna be a bit thicker than the current 40 millimeter we have. So what we'll do is we'll grab a extra piece of styrofoam, transfer the template on, being sure to flip it twice for both sides, and then adding a depth line about maybe an inch in and actually cutting that free. That way we have a nice thinner piece of styrofoam which can be placed on top to create the extra detail needed. We can't of course leave it at the 40 mil, so I wouldn't try that even if you wanted to. So what we'll do now is we'll break apart the template and start adding in some layers. We'll first add in the bottom part, which is of course gonna allow us to round off this grip and we'll add it in maybe just a quarter of a quarter of an inch high and then maybe, well not maybe, but where the actual design tells you for the horizontal line up top. Once you've got those both laid in, you can very carefully, like you can see me here going through and shaving off, making sure that both lines are meeting and that this does come off on a nice straight angle or ramp to allow for the nice clean underlay. 
You want to do that, of course, on the second side as well, but do it at both stages that way you're not confusing. We can then go ahead and start adding all the additional lines using the template, following the exact same process, adding that depth line, adding the horizontal line, and going ahead with the nice sharp craft blade and beveling those off, making sure the ramp is nice and clean. These aren't rounded ramps, these are just straight, straight ramps like you'd see on a skateboard park. Actually, I take that back. Skateboard parks have different variant ramps. And then go ahead and grab the template, of course, again, and use the interior lines to transfer those in. If you want, you can go ahead and detail those by adding a little bevel line just to give it some nice thickness. We're then gonna now chuck in all the remaining detail, which is uh, some very annoying little tiny rectangle lines here, simply by carefully using the template as a negative space, transfer them in, and then go ahead with a nice sharp craft blade, taking your time and precision to cut all those individual pieces out. Then once you think you've got it all to standard, you can simply go ahead with some hot glue and glue it into position. So that's it, part one done and dusted. Of course, it is a very slow and tedious process, but the final result will be something fantastic. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, go ahead and jump right into part two and continue the build and really get this guy looking epic. Let's do it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, jump into part two.